Good morning and welcome to St. Andrew's Church for this service of morning prayer. Our service begins with hymn 657, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, hymn 657. service continues in the prayer book on page 78. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And let us proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia.
the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. A reading from the prophet Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king is coming to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow he shall cut off and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. The word of the Lord. and all powers of the Lord. 
reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to the crowd, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, 
because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and who revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Light burdens, easy yokes, rest for the soul. These images give us a glimpse of the gentle side of Jesus, which stands in sharp contrast to the man who can also provoke conflict and division. Check out the four verses omitted from the Matthew reading. Woe to you, sackcloth and ashes, the day of judgment. Yikes. The Jesus we hear from today is more appealing. I like this one. Unfortunately, we can't slice Jesus in two, embrace one half and reject the other. As with anyone we want to get to know, we can't pick and choose the aspects of Jesus' personality we like and ignore the rest. We have to take Jesus as a whole person, just as we want him to take us. In his early travels through Galilee, Jesus sought to make the kingdom of God a reality for people who came to hear him. But he wasn't the only charismatic figure with the message. It was a volatile time. Various factions were vying for for control of hearts and souls as a way to settle political conflicts with the Roman occupiers. Jesus was just one of many preachers competing for attention. Even John the Baptist, while he sat in prison, sends word asking if Jesus is the Messiah for whom they have been waiting. Despite miracles, all that he has said, healings, and a message that was different from the others, no one yet seemed ready to hand him the keys to the gates of Jerusalem. At the very least, it was clear that Jesus was not like any other religious figure. It was the fact that Jesus was so unusual and sometimes harsh, that made it hard for some people to warm up to him. It probably didn't help that he went around publicly saying things like, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. We've worked extremely hard, physically, mentally, and spiritually, to get where we've gotten in life. Who wants to go back and start over in some form of childhood? Yet God doesn't have much to say to those who through their own efforts think they already have life figured out. Those who see themselves as spiritually advanced, masters of their own souls. They don't need God. So God obliges and doesn't bother them. Jesus reveals God to the not so spiritually wise, those who struggle with their convictions and sometimes wonder if they believe in anything. That kind of person God can work with because those struggles and doubts while weighing heavily on the believer are an opportunity for God to do something wonderful. When the burdens of the world work to smother faith, starve our souls, and rob us of our humanity, Jesus says there is another way and offers to show us how to find it. What separates the wise from the infants is a soul that has a capacity to be led to learn. No and alls will make it on their their own way. Bringing God into the mix would just interfere with their plans. Infants don't know quite what to do, except to cry out to God for help, which God is eager to give. Jesus' invitation to the weary and the heavy laden 
is an invitation to give up those things that weigh us down and accept his yoke, which is the cross on which all those doubts and concerns and guilts that burden us can be left once and for all. At first sight, we might not like the Jesus who puts his cross in front of us. Yet we are often so eager to carry crosses of our own making that turn out to be far heavier than anything Christ will ever ask us to carry. At some point, most everyone grows attached to at least one burden in their life, usually the heaviest and most familiar. That is exactly the one Christ wants to take from us. When we become accustomed to suffering under a comfortable burden, the prospect of relief or change can be scary. Jesus says that no amount of striving, no exertion, no effort can bring rest to a weary soul. That doesn't sit too well with those who are convinced that they can take care of themselves. Only by giving Christ whatever it is that keeps us awake at night will we begin to know God and what God offers. We have to want something different. We have to need something other than ourselves. Jesus says, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. As with every interaction we might have with Christ, this is just another example of how, if we just do what he says, we will get far more than we are ever asked to give. Amen. Our service continues with the Apostles' Creed on page 96 of your prayer books. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And grant us your salvation. Let your people sing with joy. For only in you can we live in safety. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Your saving help among all nations. nor the hope of the poor be taken away. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. Lord God Almighty, you made all the peoples of the earth for your glory to serve you in freedom and in peace. Give to the people of our country a zeal for justice and the strength of forbearance that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name. Amen. service continues on page 101 of the prayer book with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, 
for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 692. Hymn 692. Mm -hmm. 